My favorite in-state recruit is supposed to be on campus this weekend. Can Auburn land him? Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. And thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Talking all things Auburn recruiting, it is a Cruton Thursday with John Garcia with Sports Illustrated as well as Locked On Recruiting Insider. John, my favorite in-state target for the Auburn Tigers. And there's a ton of uh, ton of talented guys in this state as we've talked about time and time and time right. again. I love Jeremiah Cobb, the running back from Montgomery. I think he's going to be a star at the college level. He's supposedly coming into campus this weekend. He's grown up around the program just being an hour away. Um, Clemson, though, has kind of surged as of late. What do we know about Jeremiah Cobb and, and his recruitment so far? Yeah, Zach, that's the program that, you know, we've we've been trying to, I guess, warn people about. Uh, Clemson was was always in the mix yeah. recruiting him. Um, they take their time to offer recruits. Uh, and sometimes it means when that offer does come, it's a huge deal. And I think that was the case for Jeremiah Cobb, who recently got that Clemson offer. He visited a couple weeks ago when seemingly every recruit in the South was at Clemson. Uh, so, yeah, it is something to keep an eye on from the Auburn perspective, but I think you could make the argument that Jeremiah is the most important offensive in-state recruit, not only your favorite, but maybe the most important for the Tigers on the offensive side of the ball within state lines. Uh, but it's, it's not going to be easy to grab him nonetheless. However, as you said, grew up near the program, certainly understands what Auburn is selling, has grown close yeah. to Cadillac Williams, who he grew up watching. So certainly that helps when you play the same position. Um, so we'll see. You know, I think Jeremiah has taken some visits. He seems to not be in a rush. There's still, you know, apparently a question as to whether or not he's going to wrap this thing up before his senior year at Montgomery Catholic begins, uh, okay. which I think is interesting because most of these top recruits are starting to wind things down. And Jeremiah might be doing so privately, but he's he hasn't come out and said, hey, I'm committing on this day just yet. So I do think that that creates a little bit of wiggle room for some of the programs in the mix. But I think no matter how long he extends the process, Auburn's going to be in the thick of it. Clemson's going to be in the thick of it. And then we'll see who else. You know, I think he's he's got a top group. Florida, Texas is in there to a degree. We'll yeah. see if he gets out to those campuses and then they start to climb up the list a little bit. But I have a hard time envisioning this being anything other than a Tigers versus Tigers battle in the end. And, and it's not an easy call at this point. Yeah, right, right. I think you can definitely see the arguments and the trends both directions. So, I mean, Auburn, Auburn folks, I mean, they see these lists uh, of all these talented recruits and, you know, come in every week. And usually it's double digits when you look at the month of June. And I think they keep expecting for a guy to pop. Is there any chance, any chance in your mind that Jeremiah Cobb could be one of these guys that could potentially pop on his visit on the planes? He could. Absolutely. You know, I, I don't, I probably don't expect it. Uh, but he could pop. I think a lot of these Auburn targets, Tiger targets, excuse me, are starting to wind down, uh, particularly on offense. We've talked about Brock Glenn forever. Mm -hmm. It seems right. like Carmelo English has a commitment date coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, and Cobb could, again, be one of those now that he got that final offer he was looking for and taking that visit to pair with this and compare to this Auburn visit he's about to take he could theoretically make a decision between one of the two Tigers. Although I do think he's going to try to get out to Texas before all is said and done because they've had some fluidity with some of their running back targets. So I could see them upping the ante and, and pressuring Jeremiah a little bit more from a communication perspective to get out to Austin. So I think that's the dark horse or sleeper program to keep an eye on with him. Um, no disrespect to Florida in that regard. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. You know, when, when, you, when you're in state – and you've got some fandom and familiarity is is to the 10th power, there's always an opportunity to potentially commit. I thought that was true for Keldrick Falk on campus recently, Brock Glenn on campus recently, and, and Cobb this weekend. I could absolutely see him leaving as a Tiger commitment, uh, but I do think those other Tigers are going to have something to say. Let's stay with offensive targets, John. 
So Lance Hurd sounds like he goes by Lance Hurd, four-star offensive tackle, 6'5", 300 from Louisiana. Seems like he's an LSU favorite. Nebraska's in there, but Auburn offered him earlier this week. And when Auburn folks see offensive tackles being offered, we get excited, John. We get excited and we get filled with hope every single time. What do we know about this kid? Yeah, he's a, he's an emerger this spring, really this year. Uh, we, we're starting to hear more uh, about Zalance. As you said, Louisiana guy, uh, 6'5", 300 pounds, one that when coaches went by to see him this spring, yeah. a lot of them left with uh, more answers than questions, which is a good thing uh, for that recruit. So he started yeah. to pick up a ton of scholarship offers, uh, really dating all the way back to January uh, as his 2021 tape got out. He's now at a bigger program uh, as well in, in Neville, uh, Louisiana. So I do think uh, that will help to further increase his profile like we saw in the spring months. Uh, so, yeah, LSU's in there. You just mentioned Auburn just offered. So the next step, of course, is getting him uh, to the Plains to, to have him check out the program. Uh, and a lot of other schools are kind of in that same group because right. for a kid who is emerging kind of before our eyes, he hasn't taken a whole lot of visits. You know, I think Nebraska, like you said, uh, is in the mix and got him on campus. And, and that's really it as far as, as we can tell at this point. So most of these kids that we talk about are always, you know, long-term recruits, guys who have had offers for a while and they're starting to wind down. I think Hurd is on the opposite end of the spectrum. He's just now, you know, in takeoff or relative to his recruitment. So I do think there could be some time between now and, and maybe a final decision. So there's an opportunity for Auburn uh, to get him on campus and, and kind of see where he stacks up um, relative to some of the other top tackles on the board, Wilkin Formby, Stanton, Ramil, the two in-state guys, uh, right. as well as Clay Wedden from down in Tampa and, and some of these others uh, that that have the Tigers in the mix. So they're right, they're right in the thick of it for a handful of guys that all have tackle potential. And I know, as you mentioned, that's a big deal up there. It is, yeah. And Ramil, you mentioned him, the, the talented tackle from Thompson put out his top eight. Auburn made the cut there. So some good news on the planes. But it's interesting. You talk about Zalance Hurd ascending. Auburn's usually, there's been a trend since Brian Harson taken over that Auburn's been in earlier on some of these guys that are ascending. Did he just slip through the cracks, do you think? Why, why did the offer come so late? I mean, obviously at a huge position of need for the Tigers. Yeah, I think the board is expanding. You know, I think it could potentially tell us maybe where Auburn stands with some of these other guys on the board, right? Maybe oh, they no. feel, I hope not, John. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. <laughs> maybe it, it could just be one guy, right? It could could just be right. one offensive tackle that maybe you just don't feel as good about. But also, I think on, to Hurd's credit, you know, he's he made the transfer. He's got more eyeballs on him at, at that school. Uh, and, and other programs are jumping in. So I do think that, you know, it's still early enough to where – it's not something that Hurd is going to, you know, poach against the Tigers for. Like, hey, you offered me so late. Now I'm not going to consider you. I don't think it's it's anywhere close to that. Uh, but usually it means that either the board is expanding and you just want to target more guys or potentially one of the guys that was relatively high on the board maybe doesn't feel like a, Auburn is, is still in the mix for him. But I'm, I can't name them, right? I mean, I think they're still high up. For Ramil, we just mentioned, Formby's, you know, got, got this whole kind of hyper-local group that he's looking at, Bama, Auburn, Ole Miss, uh, the, the main competitors there. Um, Clay Wedden certainly still very high on Auburn. I, I touched base with his camp earlier this week. Okay. Uh, he's set to, to check out Auburn as well. So uh, I think the, the main guys are still the main guys, but maybe secondary targets – are starting to make moves and 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 there's another spot potentially on the table. So let's let's stay on the optimistic front today. There we go, John. There we go. All right, two defensive linemen to keep an eye out on. We will tell you who in just a moment. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. They've got this new flavor. It's called Mud Pie. And actually, my box just got here. I brought it in. The box is sitting on my counter. Have not had one. I just eaten lunch when I got home and it was on my doorstep. But Look, you've heard me talk about all these awesome flavors that Built Bar has over and over and over again. Talking to other hosts that received their mud pie box of Built Bars, apparently it's their best flavor yet, which is saying something. You guys have heard me brag about these guys for years, so I can't wait to try this. Mud pie, it comes in the puff as well as the Built Bar, and uh, they're very high in protein, very low in calories. 
Built Bars keep you full. They're not just a protein bar that you eat and you feel hungry 30 minutes later. It's like, well, this is supposed to be a meal replacement. What? What's going on? Well, Built Bar, less calories, and it keeps you full longer. It's all that protein. It's real, real stuff. Check it all out at Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off. That is at Built.com. John Garcia, our guest on this Cruton Thursday. First defensive lineman I want to talk about today, John. Ruben Bain, the defensive lineman from Miami Central, four star, 6'2, 250. Obviously, a Miami kid. He was on campus this past weekend, and, and we didn't get a, whole, a chance to talk about him a whole lot last week. But Auburn fans seem really interested in this kid. It seems like the Canes are the leader. But um, what are you uh, what are you hearing about his recruitment? Can Auburn crack in there? Yeah, I'm hearing the same thing. I'm hearing Miami is is the team to beat here. It's the local program. It's the one he's visited and is most familiar with. But there's a caveat in this thing that I think helps Auburn and, and every other team in this race. He's yeah. nowhere close to a decision. You know, he, he knows just about everything he possibly can uh, about Coral Gables and, and Miami and Mario Cristobal. So basically, from the moment they took over, he started making a bunch of trips down to campus. Uh, so he's extremely familiar there. But he is doing due diligence here and really trying to see who could stack up uh, to the local angle. And, and we've heard a lot of programs trying to get into the mix from Alabama, now Auburn, Oklahoma, uh, several others have tried uh, to, to really uh, change that tune for Ruben Bain, who's a, an extremely productive pass rusher, maybe the most productive in the country, had almost 30 sacks last year playing at a very high level against great competition down in Miami. So you could understand why everybody wants a piece of this kid. And you could also understand why he's taking his time with the process. So that's great news for the Tigers, which have already hosted him multiple times. I think that's a big sure. deal. Um, you know, we look at Florida and Alabama as border states, but the actual distance between Miami and Auburn is quite far. It's not uh, just, hey, I'll drive up to, to AU and, and check out the right. plane. So yeah. for him to have multiple trips under his belt, I, I thought was a pretty big deal. He has built long-term familiarity with the coaching staff, uh, particularly Christian Robinson, who, again, we always talk about with, with linebackers in particular as, as one of the best uh, individual position recruiters in the country. Uh, so Auburn's always going to be in the mix for, for top pass rushers that are, are edge or stand-up linebacker types like of Ruben Bain. So I think that's great news for AU. Uh, and again, that timeline is, is really critical here. If that does not change, you feel good about your positioning. Uh, again, he, he's trying to take more trips just to get a true sample of, of what's yeah. out there. Uh, but Auburn's doing about as well a job as, as any fan could hope for at this point. It really feels like they're going to stay in this race uh, until the end. And, and unless you know he wakes up tomorrow and says, hey, I want to make a commitment. Uh, I do think that's good news for AU because I think they'll hang around and and get into the fall with Ruben Bain. And I think for a lot of programs that aren't the leader for a, a certain recruit, I think the fall is really uh, an even playing ground uh, when it comes uh, to changing the narrative with with certain recruits. Not only could you host them for game days and, and show it an atmosphere, uh, but you could also highlight some of the things you've been talking about for months. And, and in Ruben Bain's case, it's, hey, we need edge guys. We need pass rushers. And now you can go out there and see it against big time SEC competition. So I think getting into the fall helps everybody not named Miami in the in the Ruben Bain race. And Auburn could be right there uh, at the forefront of it. Yeah. And John, it just seems like there's going to be a guy when they recruit one of these edge rushers or outside guys where, you know, if they're competing with Alabama and Georgia and I don't know Miami situation when it comes to Bain, but there's going to be a guy that comes to campus and the coaching staff takes them through the depth chart and is like, your path to playing time here is pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And I just think there's going to be somebody that comes on campus that's going to be like, yeah, okay, I'm sold. I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? I mean, this is, right. you know, in Ruben's case in particular, extremely competitive kid uh, who wants to go out there. He's, you know, just look at his Twitter. He's just like a workout warrior. Uh, yeah. And then obviously it translates to Friday nights and, and you see him in a camp setting and, and he's the one taking everybody's reps. So who really just wants to get after it. So uh, yeah. he's confident uh, kind of quietly confident, uh, but a confident kid uh, who absolutely believes he should be a year one impact guy. And that's why I believe you, you don't see the Clemsons and the Ohio States 
you know, in this race or the Georgias even in this race sure. to the to the same degree, uh, because I do think playing time and and actually specifying the role he's going to have, because size wise, he's a bit of a tweener, right? He's built more like a uh, Tedarian Moultrie type uh, than than a classic edge rusher who's six four two forty coming yeah. off, you know, coming off the edge there. So I do think that there is some desire for information to get a true, you know, specific um, like and our likeness to what he's going to be doing at the next level. All right. Other defensive linemen that I'd like to talk to you about Jamal Jarrett, four star six, six, three fifty. So um, a much bigger guy than, than Bain. This guy's going to be able to play all along the defensive front from Greensboro. You and I talked about him a few weeks ago. Uh, seems like North Carolina is in it. He's got an upcoming visit with them. And then obviously Georgia is in it, but it seems like Auburn's making a push here, John. Yeah, absolutely. Auburn's been a school he's been mentioning pretty early when you talk to him dating back to January and February. And I think that consistency is starting to pay off for the Tigers. He took the official visit and obviously got a more intimate look at the program. And and really it's, it's becoming an SEC race uh, at the top with, with Auburn and Georgia versus staying home and, and playing for the Tar Heels, which have hosted him uh, about as much as Miami's hosted Reuben Bain. That's the hometown school in, in just about uh, every single way. So you would understand if he would spurn the SEC to stay home. Um, and, you know, scrolling his Twitter yesterday, he said there's a big announcement coming. So I, mm-hmm. I think, you know, this top three that we're perceiving yeah. as North Carolina, Auburn, and Georgia is probably closer to true. Um, and it makes me kind of not feel bad, but, you know, Texas A&M has him on the future visit schedule uh, for this weekend. Kind of makes me think the Aggies on the outside looking in going into that visit. Uh, so if he does elect to end the process or narrow things further, it, it does look like uh, Auburn and Georgia are, are the safe bets to be the primary competition to UNC before all is said and done. And if he makes a commitment, you got to love your positioning for Auburn because he's fresh off of that trip. Uh, so yeah. I do think that's huge news for Jimmy Brumbo and company if uh, he is you know, down and ready uh, to make that decision. Uh, but we'll see. We're all kind of pins and needles on, on what he's going to say because like you said, 6'6", 340 plus pounds or so. Ooh. I mean, this is a true interior gap uh, occupier, blocker occupier, uh, just a black hole of a prospect up front, you know, an old school guy uh, who could help you uh, really control the run game. But he's more nimble than you'd think uh, when, when you when you see those big numbers next to, to his name relative to his size. So a big time prospect out of North Carolina who, again, has all the makings and feels of an SEC guy, but the hometown school is absolutely going to stay in that race as well. So curious to see what his next move is. Yeah, and and John, no reason to feel bad for Texas A&M. Never, never feel right. Bad. I know, and that's why they want to say it that way. I think they're doing okay. <laughs> I think they're going to be okay. That's right. That's right. John Garcia, our guest, in just a moment. How is Auburn being negatively recruited against? We'll get John's answer on that in just a moment. Right here on Locked On Auburn. Real quick, I want to encourage you guys to join the Locked On Auburn Discord if you're into recruiting. We're talking about that twenty four seven. If you're into Auburn baseball during this College World Series run, we're talking about that all the time. Uh, Over 900 Auburn fans just talking ball, talking sports, talking everyday life. Be sure to check it out in the episode description down below. Just click that link to join the Discord. It's a Cruton Thursday. John Garcia, our guest, got this question from a listener. They've actually asked it a few weeks in a row and just haven't had time to get to it because we've had a million visitors. But how is Auburn being negatively recruited? And uh, I think some of this is probably going to be hypothetical, John, but just, you know, from your perspective, what do you think those conversations are like, you know, when, um, when a Reuben Bain is talking, you know, to Miami and he's like, well, I had a good time at Auburn. You know, wh- what, what do you think these guys are being told? Well, they should, uh, they should avoid uh, focusing on, on another logo or another program, but of course, you know, these are humans, right? These are human being right. uh, coaching these and recruiting uh, these great players. So you, you know what comes up. So I would say hypothetically, I think it would just really go back to the offseason and, and all of the turnover uh, on the planes under Brian Harson, whether it's uh, the coaching turnover under him, the player turnover relative to the portal, uh, something right. dating back to, to those months where 
we really didn't know what was going on really for, you know, for a lack of, of a better phrase, there was a lot of questions around the program um, I believe right after the season. So I, I think that's, kind of the the easy you know low-hanging fruit to, to jump on if you're another coaching staff because really when you get into x's and o's and defense and positional stuff um especially if you're if it's miami a transition coaching staff uh you know i don't think it's wise to bring up some of those things because auburn has has been there and done that in, in just about every way when it comes to college football even recently uh they've been there and done that in just about every way so i really uh, would be curious to see how negatively they would try to recruit. Um, but I do think it, it wouldn't, it would avoid the personal stuff with the coaches. You know, I think that's something that there's almost like a code, although this off season has taught us that that code is being challenged when it comes to oh, Jimbo yeah. and Kiffin and Saban and Dion and all that. Um, but there's almost a code of like, Hey, let's, let's keep it on the field uh, if you will. Uh, so I don't think the personal stuff would come up as much. Um, and then, you know, there's counters to all these arguments as well, right? You know, obviously uh, nothing did happen after all of that, you know, confusion and or transition uh, under Brian Harson. Uh, right. And some of the coaches that are, are now in place are, are Auburn guys. Uh, so it's really hard to argue against uh, some of those decisions and, and get to this point where, where they're at right now. A lot of former players on the coaching staff as well, which is something that always plays well with recruits. So it's it's kind of hard to poke holes uh, from 30,000 feet. Uh, but you know that, you know, the offseason and those question marks absolutely do uh, come up uh, for, for that coaching staff. So I'm not sure where else they would go with it, but but you do know what's happening to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sure Auburn's doing the same thing to to other folks as well whenever um, whenever it comes up. Uh, John, great stuff as always, my friend. How can people follow everything? And there's a ton of it. Everything you got going on right now. Yeah, a lot. June is is like the new December in recruiting. It's it's been quite fun, and, and we've got yeah. a long way to go. So yeah, check us out si.com/slash college. A lot of quarterback content. Some big decisions coming down, including Brock Glenn over the next couple of weeks. So we'll try to stay on top of it for you at si.com. John Garcia covering you with everything you need to know on the recruiting front. We'll be back tomorrow right here on Locked on Auburn.